All right, guys, so back again. The Jaguars have another preseason matchup this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Really excited about this one, so let's discuss the matchup. Now, I don't know what is more exciting, the fact that we have another preseason game coming up or that we only have two preseason games left because... I mean, you know how these guys get. I, I never even understand preseason because, man, I, I, it's like you, it's better than not having anything, but at the same time, it can be a torture to watch. But we did get some good news today, and that's that look, the Jaguar starters are expected to play for more than a quarter, if not even maybe a whole entire half, which is really exciting. I know it's exciting for myself. A lot of people, like on Twitter, a lot of people in my comment section, they're like scared about it. They'd rather just like rest guys and put people on bubble wrap. But And I can understand that. I really can. Uh, but I, I just feel like if you're a team like the Patriots or a team, I don't know, just not the Patriots may not be the best example, but like the Chiefs or, you know, one of the or Rams, like those are teams that can rest guys, guys that have been in the playoffs, that consistently go, and that have the nucleus in place. Right now with the Jaguars, the offense and defense has basically a projected 50% new starting lineup from last year to this year. There's a lot of new additions on the team, and not to mention we have a brand new head coach and new coordinators. So really, I mean, the guys, the guys need to go out there and play. I mean, this is my opinion. And I know this could be a cold tape because look, if someone goes down, everyone's going to be like, oh my gosh, I told you we should have rested our starters. But guess what? Last game we played starters and nothing bad happened. It's just, you, you got to go out there and you got to, you got to play football sometimes, man. It's a, it's a tough person's game, but some things I'm excited about for this one, man, it's going to be our first time seeing guys like Christian Kirk. It'll be our first time seeing Christian Kirk out there in live action uh, for the Jaguars. And, you know, that's the guy that the Jaguars really broke the bank for this season. Uh, last game, we had a bunch of receivers kind of break out. I mean, I really liked the way that Zay Jones played. He was a new addition. Evan Ingram got a touchdown. That was all exciting stuff. But, you know, Christian Kirk, it'll be our first time being able to see him out there in a Jaguars uniform. So that's a guy that I'm going to keep a close eye on. Um, LaVisca Chenault, this will be his first preseason action we get to see him in. Um, I'm excited to see more of ETN. I mean, last last week we really saw ETN for the first time. I know he played like a preseason game or two last year, but he was very, very lightly featured. But uh, this time around, we saw him out there get with some good contact balance. You know, I want to see him continue to get work because um, I think he is rusty in a little bit of areas. And I, I think in this game, I'd probably... You know, last last game they got him really acclimated when it comes to just handing the ball off to him. This game I'd like to maybe see him try to get some more receptions. I mean, he dropped one almost touchdown pass. I don't know if he would have got in there for a touchdown, but it looks like his hands might still need some work. And I kind of want the Jaguars to maybe use him in that Alvin Kamara role. So go out there, you know, get him the ball downfield or in the flats, whatever. Um, I'd like to see some more. Just them trying to get him a little bit more involved in the passing game this time. Um you know, some other stuff going on really with the offense. There's an offensive line battle, a couple of them going on. Um, one is left guard Barch versus Shatley, and another one is right tackle Little versus Taylor. The the Barch thing kind of popped up this week. I think maybe, I, I don't know if that was the plan in place to, you know, eventually have a competition once Luke Fortner got more settled at the center position. Um, but now, like left guard Ben Barch, he's, um, they kind of inserted him a little bit this week, and I don't know. I know I know. before the preseason, I was sitting here like, oh, these are some exciting battles that I'm looking forward to. But I don't know, man. I don't know if left guard and right tackles really intrigue me too much. I just kind of want them to pick a guy and know the starting lineup and just, I guess, continue to do some work from there. But um, I'd be interested to see if, like, the loser of the Little versus Taylor battle, like, you know, with this being Juwan Taylor's last year on a contract year, do they try to maybe – see how he plays on the interior of the line or do they see him as more maybe maybe they try to get him some work at left tackle maybe he's like the swing tackle if little or cam robinson go down um that's one to probably look at but i don't know uh there is that competition there so if that's something that excites you you know that's that's out there another thing is uh, i want to obviously see trevor lawrence i mean that's the big thing the future of the franchise, he had a good game last game, especially when it comes to getting Trevor Lawrence out on the run, throwing on the run. He looked incredible at that. 
Uh, but the thing I want to see more, just him in the pocket, going through his progressions, making the accurate throws. I think that's the main thing that probably needs some work from him in that category. So this is another good opportunity for him on Saturday to go out there and do some work. Um, lastly, on the offensive side is I want to kind of see if anybody emerges as the RB3. I know James Robinson is expected to be back week one, which is awesome. But if not, who's going to be the RB2? Um, is it? I think right now it's a competition between Snoop, Connor, um, Reichwell Armstead versus like a waiver wire guy. You know, maybe they Jaguars have first priority on the waiver wire. So maybe they exercise that to kind of find somebody out there uh, and, you know, off the waivers to kind of fulfill that spot. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see, you know, maybe someone break out this game and have a really good game and just say, okay, that's that dude. But. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that. Now on to the defensive side again. Now, I made a video about this earlier, but Devin Lloyd is going to be out again on Saturday. But the good news is that he is doing, he is practicing now. Like he's he's going from doing individual stuff. Now he's doing more teamwork. So the quicker we get him back, the better. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping maybe he plays at least one preseason game. I don't know if, but of course, I don't want to push him out too early. Look, if he's not ready to go, don't make him go out there and go. But um, that's it's going to stink, though, if he misses the whole entire preseason because, I mean, I don't care what you say. That, that puts you behind. You know, this is live game action, especially for a rookie. This stuff is important. I mean, you saw Hall of Fame game. I mean, Trevor didn't play. You know, the even some of the second-year guys didn't play. But you know who played? Every single rookie, I mean, all the rookies got action. So that's uh, it's important for rookies, I think, preseason more more than like really anybody else. Um, I want to keep seeing Trayvon Walker. He's been an absolute stud. Um, just not only just like getting pressure, but he's been like drawing like holding penalties. Like he's been just his athleticism and his strength is showing out there. It really is. That's fun to see. So. Um, just want to continue to see because it's fun. I mean, I love looking and seeing him dominate the person in front of him. So I hope that um, really does continue. Now, some guys that are one guy that's having a pretty good preseason and training camp, I think. And he's a guy that not a lot of Jawa fans really like that much is Rayshon Jenkins. Apparently, he's having a really good camp. He had a really good game last game, forcing that fumble on uh, the Ernest Johnson. So he, I want to see if he continues to have a good, um, just a good preseason in general. Um, and also, I want to keep seeing Tyson Campbell. Now, one thing that I want to see out of this is just I want to see more of a challenge on like defensively. Now, the way the Browns played, look, like I said this before, like I think the Browns more so beat themselves and the Jaguars beat them. And I say that because like Deshaun Watson like overthrew a guy on this first play. Um, a, one of the wide receivers from Auburn like kept dropping the ball. They just they had like seven total yards on offense, and a lot of it was just super self inflicted. They were getting penalties all over the place. Um, so this game, I mean, that's great. I mean, in a regular season, give me that all day. I'm telling y'all, like I, I want that in the regular season. But preseason, I don't know. Let's go out there and test the defense a little bit more. Uh, give the team because right now the team's feeling all good about only allowing seven yards. Give us give us something to look at on tape and say we need to correct that. Um, but hey, I'll continue to you know cheer for the defense's success, especially when we're getting uh, turnovers. I mean, they forced a turnover out there. Man, maybe we can get an interception this game. I'm excited about that one. Uh, some other guys on the defensive line that are having really good camps is Dewan Smoot and Arden Key. I mean, they're continuing to, continuing to really flash before our eyes. Um, earlier in the week, Malcolm Brown was cut from the Jaguars. Um, I think apparently that's in large part due to uh, J2 Felly having a good camp and also Devon Hamilton. So maybe we see some maybe we see some splashes out of those guys. Now it's not a super like flashy position. A lot of times you're just kind of stuffing the run, but and just kind of letting the linebackers do some cleanup work. But um, yeah, hopefully these guys keep progressing. Now guys, I'm gonna be live streaming this one on Saturday again. I'll probably do. A, I'll do all the preseason games. If the starters are out the last preseason game, I'm sorry. I don't I don't think I can watch. At least we don't have at least we won't have to watch Jake Luton anymore, right? Uh but you know, the starters are what makes it fun and the backups is what makes it terrible. Come on, let's see. I guess that's another thing I can add. Let's see some good depth play. I want maybe we can come out with a win. I don't really care that much about 
winning in the preseason, but you know, maybe win a game. I mean, going one and three in the preseason would be nice. Right now the Jags are 0 and two, but um, I don't know. Now some things to look at on the other side of the of the ball when it comes to the Steelers. Um, they're having they're in the middle of a quarterback battle right now. Uh, going into camp, it looked like Trubisky was going to be the starter, but then it, it like as of recently, it looks like Pickett might be starting to lead the battle. So you know they're going to be. I mean, they're going to be trying. I mean, they want this is a good test for the Steelers to figure out who the best quarterback is. Apparently, Mason Rudolph isn't really happy with the competition. But I think Steelers, can, if you're a Steeler fan watching this, you can probably agree with me. Right? Mason Rudolph stinks. He does. So, you know, if I think a lot of Steelers fans would be outraged that they were like, Mason Rudolph starting week one? I don't know about that. But yeah, it's. Uh, you know, there's a quarterback battle going on. Another guy to look out for is George Pickens. Absolute beast uh, last game, his first game of the preseason, and just in training camp too. The guy's a stud. And, you know, this is what stinks about not having Devin Lloyd out there is because it's like, oh, George Pickens is doing all this. We could have had him, but we got Devin Lloyd, who we haven't seen anything from because he's been injured. Uh, but I'll still stick with the Devin Lloyd pick because, I mean, I think, I just think he's going to be a stud. But, you know, that's kind of a, a recurrent thing from my mouth. Uh, lastly, Miles Jack's going to be back in town. Uh, we have a new 44 in town, but now Miles Jack's repping like number 51 or something. I don't know. He's repping a weird number. He looks, I don't know if he's be very good at picking his numbers, Miles Jack. I think he looks like, like he'd fit the number like 40 better or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, Miles Jack is back in town. Uh, awesome Jaguar. It didn't work out great for, him, for the Jaguars, but I think he's in a good situation for the Steelers when it comes to, playing in a defense that really fits him and just getting a fresh start. So not a huge Steelers guy, but I'm a humongous Miles Jack guy. So I'll always, throughout Miles Jack's career, always root for his success. And yeah, that's the week two preseason preview for the Jaguars Steelers. Like I said, excited about this one. Excited to see the starters again as we ramp up to the regular season. It's almost here. I think, I think we all need a little bit of football in our life, right? Life is stressful. Let's get some football in here to uh, to ease the pain a little bit. There's nothing. I, I, can't, I just can't wait for Sunday. You wake up. You don't have work. You got football starting soon. You can throw on the Jags game. You can throw on red zone. You got all the pregame stuff. You got to get your fantasy lineups going on. Who else is with me, man? If you are, drop a like for me because uh, we're almost there. But all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Go Jags. Okay, Jacksonville Jaguars. Too much for your crew to handle. Keep it lit. And this is the number one YouTube channel by UCF Jaguar. Yeah, we about to blast off. If you've been a fan, then this is the dopest platform. Yeah, never hold back. Gotta represent for the tail and black.